The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. Whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. Really, to begin today with a word of thanks to God for our worship and praise last evening, the 40 or so who came. Um, it really is a blessed thing for us, and, and really, uh, it sounds odd to say, but it's a blessing for God. Um, God honors the praises of his people, so it's most appropriate that we just take a moment and thank God for the gift of that praise and worship, the words God gave. There seemed to be a spirit of, of healing moving, particularly uh, maybe somebody's stomach uh, and that, uh, that kind of um, part of the body. So we just recognize that, uh, you know, it's so easy to say, well, well, we did that. Well, yeah, we did do it, but it had an effect. And uh, sometimes it's important to really point out that although we don't uh, feel or see rarely, you know, the effect of our prayer, it makes a difference. God was praised. And as difficult or weary or worried or anxious as we can be, or politically, you know, disturbed, God has seen all of it before. And God is all over this like white on, Okay, so chill your bones, give thanks to God, because God's got this. In fact, I think she's not here today. Lisa, what's her name? Gray. Gray has it on her T-shirt. God's got this. So he can solve all your problems today, so enjoy the rest of the day. I mentioned before, uh, and I don't really know why, but, you know, you got some of these saints, and they're not obligatory. They are obligatory. Now, this today is not simply a memorial. It's a feast for St. Lawrence. We uh, sung the Gloria. Uh, I guess Lawrence was a big deal at the time. And, and well, again, that he, uh, God, should be praised through him. Um, you will remember the story of Lawrence, if you don't already have it in mind. Uh, it was very early in church, 258. And uh, several deacons, uh, Lawrence, of course, was a deacon and a martyr. Several deacons, three or four days preceding, uh, along with Pope Sixtus II, were martyred by Valerian, who was the emperor at the time, uh, a rather pathological individual. And uh, I said, okay, Lawrence, you have three, three days. And I think you know the story. You'll remember, oh, we like these kind of stories, right? Um, after... I don't think it was just after uh, Pope Sixtus was killed. Lawrence was the treasurer, or whatever the title was. He took care of the papal goods. So when Blarian said, okay, buddy, you know, I want the wealth of the church. You got three days. So he sold all, I don't know if all the property, he sold all the, uh, the assets of the church and gave it to the poor. And then he gathered as many poor and street people and he gathered them all and brought them into the courtyard of Valerian, and he said, these are the riches of the church. I don't think Valerian liked that too much. And I bet everybody in here can tell me how Lawrence was martyred, right? Turn me over. I'm done on this side. Ugh. Now, if you ask me, that's evangelical charity. God called him to that. Now, that's an odd thing to say, because God, did God want him to suffer that way? It's a spiritual charism. 
you know, you will understand when I say some people are just naturally generous. I, I know people like that. I try to be like that, but I'm not quite as naturally generous as some other people that I know are generous. And there's some people that are going to decidedly, well, not so much. That's not a criticism, you see, although there are stingy people out there. Consider your temperament or your personality type. There's all kinds of reasons and whys and wherefores of how and why some people are more generous than others. Some people have more. Some people are more free of spirit. You know, an extrovert, an introvert, you know. Um, there's a lot of very powerful introverts in the world, but they're the people that can go to a party and no one ever knows they're there. But still water runs deep. There's a lot of wildly extroverted people, and you always know they're there. And sometimes they're very generous because it's just their personality. I think that's part of what St. Paul means, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Now, almost immediately, most of us will think of cash and money. And that's probably could be what Paul is thinking. But charity and generosity comes in all kinds of ways, does it not? Charity of spirit, patience, kindness, uh, goodness, forgiveness. Well, now there's a charity, forgiveness and mercy. Each must do as already determined without sadness or compulsion. No, don't get stuck there. Well, no, God didn't give me the gift of generosity, so I don't have to be. I think Lawrence had that spirit of heart. And these readings obviously are paired or, 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 or brought forth for this feast of St. Lawrence. I think, and you would understand, Lawrence is a beautiful embodiment of the gospel. Lawrence is that grain of wheat that falls to the ground who dies and bears much fruit. You understand the image. Well, the garden ladies do anyway. You know, the seeds. You know, you have just one little seed, but if you plant it and nurture it and water it, that seed will break open and produce what? Uh, uh, if I remember correctly, a common yield is, is 7 to 11% from a seed. But Jesus would say 30 or 60 or 100-fold. It's a hard verse, but it's a very powerful and important one. The person who loves their life, the language is odd. Whoever loves their life will lose it. In other words, I love me the way I am. Uh, I love the person I've made myself to be, and I just want to stay like this forever. That's what it means, that we love the self I have made whereby the person who hates their life will preserve it for eternal life, is the one that understands this is all going to come and go. The real meaning of who I am is interior. I've come to realize my interior identity, more commonly understand, understood uh, the difference between the false self, the self I have made, generally out of the ego that grows out of our human experience, positive, negative, good, bad, ugly, and everything in between. Or the true self. The true self, of course, is Christ in us. And it takes a lifetime, for most of us, to realize that true self. And ever so slowly through the course of our years, things fall away. Things that we just, you know, when we were in our teens, that was just the whole, our, my whole life, I've, I've just got to have that, and this is how I am, and this is how I want people to see me, and by the time we're 30, oh my God, that was so stupid. And then we're 40, and you know the rest of the story. But then we have to let go of these things. I have no idea how old Lawrence was, but he was open. He loved his life because it was a gift of God, but he did not hold his life as it was his own as if it were his own, making it only the way he liked it or the way he wanted it to be. Is it okay that we have a personality and we like uh, ourselves the way we are? Of course it is. Self-love, self-worth, self-respect, self-valuing. That's not what this is talking about. It's talking about people that get stuck 
I love the self that I have made and I'm never going to change because I like me the way I am. And then all those gifts that God has filled us with um, remain unaware or unused. That's what the reading means. As we pray then today, we are richly blessed by these stories and the reality of the lives that they represent. It's pretty heavy, uh, heady company with Saints Peter and Paul. Lawrence is also a patron of Rome. It wasn't until the fourth century, which, which would have been about 150 years later, uh, the cult is what it's called, but so many people rose up in love and devotion for Lawrence. He had an effect that much later. It wasn't happening quite so much at the time, but in the earliest church and throughout the Old Testament, these kinds of stories, scripture itself, was only recorded through what was originally known as the oral tradition. Everybody didn't have big pens. They didn't have pads of legal paper. All they had was papyrus and other, you know, uh, uh, bark or whatever to write on with, with ink or the stain of berries. They didn't have ink. So they had these oral traditions. But these stories are critical because they encourage us. I don't really care to think about the gridiron that, uh, that he uh, gave his life on, but I sure am edified by his generosity. What an obnoxious thing to do, but a beautiful thing in the mind and the image of Christ. Sell the assets of the church because the, the emperor is going to take it anyways. Sell it and give it to the poor and then bring the people of God the likes of you and I, and say, these, this is the treasure of the church. You are a treasure of God. You'll remember that. The pearl of great price, the hidden treasure. You are the treasure. Christ is the pearl. Let us find ourselves in Christ, letting go of who we think we are so we can discover ever more deeply who we truly are in Christ Jesus. Lord, thank you for the gift of St. Lawrence. May our lives today, in our words and deeds, continue to give you praise and worship. Come, Holy Spirit.